The organizers of uh, this program requested me to speak on this topic, the art of studying and teaching scriptures. So, it's a great fortune for any human being to get an opportunity to study scriptures or to hear scriptures uh, and to speak on scriptures. Uh, however, by careful a study of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is one of the most prominent Vaishnava scriptures. In fact, Bhagavatam is considered to be the cream of all uh, Vedic literatures. Bhagavatam is considered the ripened fruit of the desire tree of all Shastras. So, if we study Bhagavatam very scrutinizingly, then we will understand the mood of studying scriptures or hearing. And we will also understand the mood of uh, speaking Shastra. Okay. So, in this uh, two sessions, Art of Studying and Teaching Scriptures, we are having two sessions. In one session, I will focus on studying. In another session, we will focus on teaching. And in this session on studying, we will do um, two things. One, to understand the mood of studying scriptures. Second, to understand the method of studying scriptures. Same thing with the teaching part. Tomorrow we will see uh, the mood of teaching Shastra and the methods of teaching Shastra. Okay. So, before entering the methods of studying or teaching, we should understand in what mood should we read. What is the mood of approaching Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or any other divine uh, literature. So, let's begin with the mood. So, it's an elaborate discussion, but I will just uh, share a few thoughts within the available time we have. So, there are five potent forms of bhakti, as all of you know. One is Nama Kirtan, chanting the holy names of Krishna. Second is Bhagavata Shravan, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Third is Mathuravas, means staying in a holy dham, like Mathura Vrindavan. Fifth, Shri Murti Shraddhaya Seva means to carefully worship the deity form of the Lord. Then finally, Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, association of devotees. So, in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, written by Srila Rupa Goswami, one of our most prominent Acharyas, we are all called Rupanudas. Okay. So, he uh, mentioned that there are so many forms of Bhakti, so many limbs of Bhakti, out of all these limbs, prominent are 64, he mentioned there. Amongst these 64 limbs also, five are most potent forms of bhakti, they are these five. In these five, you see, one is Bhagavata Shravan, Srimad Bhagavata. Okay. So that Bhagavatam contains the glories of the remaining four also. Right? So when do we understand the importance of Sadhu Sangha? The importance of Sadhu Sangha is uh, best understood by reading Srimad Bhagavatam. And when we get, uh, for example, this shloka is there in the third kind of Bhagavatam. Satam prasangan mama virya samvidho bhavanti hritkar narasayana katha tajjoshanada swapavar gavartmani shraddharatir bhaktir anukramishyati. Satam prasangan mama virya samvidho, one who hears hari katha. The association of devotees hmm, can develop Krishna Prema, can begin with Shraddha and eventually pass through all the stages and attain Prema of Krishna also. So, the importance of chanting the holy names of Krishna, or the importance of a dham, or importance of Sadhu Sangha, the importance of deity worship, all of them are present in Shastra. So, Rupa Goswami is prescribing several pro processes of devotional service, several limbs of bhakti. All of them are based on Shastra. Now, take this process of deity worship. The importance of deity worship, the recommendation of deity worship is presented in scriptures. Right? Sadhu Sangha or Nama Kirtan. So, how do you understand that holy name is the way of deliverance? From the scripture. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam. Hare Krishna Mahamantra and uh, we have Iti Shoda Shakam Nam Nam Kali Kalmashanashanam. So, all the process of devotional service that we are doing, whatever we are doing, whether it is deity worship or book distribution or whatever we are doing, is based on Shastra. 
it has scriptural reference scriptures are recommending all the limbs of bhakti that we are following isn't it so shruti smriti puranadi pancha ratra vidhim vina aikantiki harer bhaktir utpata eva kalpati one may do bhakti but if that bhakti has, does not have reference to shrutis and smritis basically scriptures utpata eva kalpati one cannot concoct the processes of devotional service <coughs> one has to perform service to krishna as prescribed by the scriptures right therefore scriptural affiliation is a crucial factor in spiritual path fine therefore it is important to study scriptures okay having said little bit about the importance of scriptures let's discuss something about the mood of studying scriptures okay reading scriptures is not just an exercise of uh, intelligence it's an experience of heart right if we invest our feelings and emotions and heart in the process of studying shastra we'll get the best out of it so yes intelligence is required to understand the philosophy of shastra but intelligence alone is not sufficient right so reading scriptures is not an exercise of intelligence only it's an experience of heart so one day uh, in our altar radha vrindavan bihari altar at govardhan eco village okay so we completed dressing of the deities uh, and uh, Darshan Aarti is at 7 o'clock and uh, we completed everything, Bhoga offering is also done, we still have 2-3 minutes left, 6.57 to 7, 3 minutes, 2 minutes was left, so I was just uh, taking the Darshan, seeing the details, how did the dressing happen, everything is proper or not, so there is my co-pujari, one devotee, so with him I entered into a conversation, <laughs> okay, in all 2-3 minutes only, so he asked me, uh, why does Krishna wear peacock feather? Anyone knows why Krishna wears peacock feather? Here, because we are offering peacock feather to Krishna uh, in our dressing. We are seeing peacock feather in every painting of Krishna and even altar. Anyone knows why Krishna wears? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything more? To impress Radha is correct. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, bro. <laughs> Because once upon a time, uh, peacocks were dancing and Krishna also... Mm, peacocks danced and gifted a feather to Krishna. So they are able to see, you can come forward. There is some space here, although without mats, you can come forward. If more devotees come there, then they will be confused <laughs> whether to enter or not. <laughs> okay. So, yes, as devotees said, a peacock gifted a peacock feather to Krishna to honor that gift Krishna kept that peacock feather on his head. That's the importance he has given to the peacocks. And secondly, Radharani has a pet peacock and Krishna takes a peacock feather from that peacock and puts on his head to impress her. <laughs> okay. And also Krishna appears in a dark blue complexion which resembles a monsoon cloud. And Krishna's dhoti is uh, in the color of shining yellow uh, that resembles lightning. So Krishna's body is like cloud, Krishna's dhoti is like lightning and Krishna's pleasing smiles and loving glances are like shower of rain. Okay. So what's missing in this monsoon darshan? Rainbow. The rainbow is missing. So to complete the darshan, he will put peak of feather on his head. <laughs> okay. So one more. When Radha and Krishna are together, so Krishna appears so beautiful as like dark, dark uh, monsoon cloud and Radha and he appears like lightning. Okay, again to complete the darshan, there is a peacock feather on his head. Okay, and also the gopis of Vrindavan look at Krishna with unblinking eyes. When they see Krishna, they don't blink their eyes. So we, we are blinking our eyes every few seconds. Okay. But we are not even noticing darshan. There is a continuity in our vision all the way are blinking eyes. When you close your eyes, you can't see anything. When you open your eyes, you can see something. But when you are regularly closing the eyes, uh, although that blink is happening, closing of the eyes is, eyes is happening, 
because it's for a fraction of second he don't miss the continuity of vision isn't it but the gopis are not like that within one eye blink they experience millions of years of separation from krishna <laughs> okay they are unable to see krishna they are unable to see krishna they are feeling separation from krishna right within one eye blink so uh, the unblinking eyes of the gopis resemble the eyes on peacock feathers there are eyes on peacock feathers right do they blink do they blink shampavi uh-huh. no right the eyes on the peacock <laughs> feathers they don't blink <laughs> so when they don't blink they resemble the eyes of gopis right so krishna when he comes in front of the gopis gopis are seeing krishna with unblinking eyes and these unblinking eyes are resembling peacock feathers and krishna out of love and affection for the gopis he never wants to forget them he pe- he pe- puts multiple peacock feathers on his head to remember the eyes of the gopis okay and also the braids of the gopis uh, they are decorated with so many ornaments and flowers jewels that that braid represents uh, a, the tail of peacock not when it is open but when it is closed <laughs> right so there are various reasons why uh, krishna wears peacock feathers so we were discussing all this in all those two three minutes so why i said this whole incident was uh, incident and all the reasons for uh, you know krishna wearing peacock feathers was that ultimately our reading of shastra should convert into absorption in krishna discussion about krishna krishna's nama roopa guna leela okay so our reading of shastra should make us krishna conscious and a krishna conscious person wants to glorify krishna and wants to hear the glories of krishna isn't it so that happens by discussions mat chitta mat gata prana bodhayantah parasparam paraspara anukathanam pavanam bhagavadyashah say this paraspara anukathanam पावनम भगवद्यशः मिथोरतिहि मिथः तुष्टेर निवृत्तेर मिथः आत्मनः परस्पर अनुकथनम डिवोटीज आर दोस पीपल हु डू अनुकथनम दे दे डिस्कस अबाउट कृष्ण म्यूचुअली ओके पावनम बिकॉज़ दे आर डिस्कसिंग द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड दे बिकम प्यूरिफाइड भगवद्यशः mitho ratihi by having such spiritual discussions with like minded devotees our love for krishna will increase mitho ratihi mitha tushtir satisfaction of heart will increase nivrittir mitha atmanah and our attraction towards this material existence will be diminished so the mood of approaching shastra is that we need to take inspiration for absorbing in ourselves in krishna consciousness from shastra shastra enables us to become more and more krishna conscious so unless we have sufficient spiritual subject matter for discussion where is the possibility of harikatha and all that subject matter is coming from the scripture right it just doesn't come from the concoction of uh, an intellectual brain so all the wonderful qualities nama roopa guna leela of krishna are recorded in the scriptures when we study the scriptures and when we equip ourselves with the understanding of krishna nama roopa guna leela then we can discuss with other devotees we can hear from them we can speak to them thus mutually we become krishna conscious this discussion uh, about krishna and thus becoming krishna conscious is very much enabled by hari katha okay by scripture our scriptural study should not be just an intellectual or theoretical exercise instead it should inspire our appreciation for god and develop love for him love of god fine equipped with the right mood we should find scriptural study soften our hearts transform our character which in turn increases the relish coefficient of our shastrik study so basically by studying scriptures our heart should become softer and softer with love for krishna and our character should become more and more refined so therefore uh, we need to approach shastra in the right and appropriate mood it's not an intellectual exercise so understanding of the scripture is proportional to the attitude in which the scriptures are studied 
to the degree we have the right attitude in studying scripture to that degree we understand the scripture fine so now let me begin with uh, what it means to be a part of spiritual culture what is spiritual culture <laughs> when is sadhana our early morning japa mangalarti darshan all this mainly the chanting of the holy names of krishna all this is our sadhana one thing second uh, seva rendering services to devotees next sadachar having the right kind of etiquettes and behavior conduct in our dealings with other devotees sangha being in the company of like minded vaishnavas then swadhyaya studying the scriptures fine so these are all different aspects of spiritual culture right all five s sadhana swadhyaya sangha sadachar seva is five s so this is spiritual culture now there is an overlap between all these elements sadhana is also part of swadhyaya okay and uh, uh, sa and uh, uh, seva is also part of sangha so there is overlap but what i wanted to mention here is our understanding of scriptures is not just a product of our swadhyaya swadhyaya means scriptural study we are studying the scripture our understanding of the scripture is not just a product of our study it's also a product of all these five uh, elements of spiritual culture <coughs> by reading by doing seva you understand scripture better by doing your sadhana you understand scripture better by associating with devotees you understand scriptures better by respectfully dealing with devotees doing sadachar you definitely understand scriptures better so understanding of scriptures is not just a product of study and intelligence understanding of scriptures is also a product of the remaining four s sangha sadhana sadachar seva so say you have read one shloka from bhagavad gita 5 years back okay say ananya chintayanto ma me jana paryupasati he read one shloka he studied one shloka 5 years back fine now after 5 years again you are reading that shloka fine your understanding of this shloka now is better than your understanding 5 years back do you agree anyone here even if you have not seen that shloka for the last 5 years even once still you understand that shloka better today than 5 years back what made the difference you have not revisited that shloka you have not studied the shloka or the purport or acharya's commentaries because in this 5 years you chanted holy names of krishna every day 16 rounds 16 into 365 into 5 rounds of hari krishna mahamantra you have done in 5 years <laughs> right that contributed to the understanding of ananya chintayanta mam shloka there <laughs> okay in this 5 years you must have done so much seva you must have pleased so many vaishnavas you must have visited so many dhams you must have received so many blessings from so many devotees so all this will add to your understanding of that one little shloka right so do you agree that my our, our understanding of a scriptural shloka or scriptural past time or chapter is not just a product of my study alone in this five years you must have heard so many classes may not be on that shloka alone you must have heard many other classes that will contribute to your current understanding your understanding of that shloka so we see so many devotees they may not be very well read in scriptures they may not be great scholars but they are sincere practitioners of bhakti yoga they are taking shelter of all these five elements nicely their sadhana is nice their seva is nice although they are not well read like scholars still they have maturity they have wisdom their decision making is very good because they are a part of spiritual culture they are surrendered to guru so we need to understand that understanding scriptures is not just a product of our swadhyaya or intellectual study alone understanding of scriptures happens also by uh, sincerely performing our sadhana and seva not just swadhyaya clear okay. so that's why krishna said in bhagavad gita tadvidhi pranipatena paripraśnena sevaya 
ప్రణిపాతండవత్ be respectful to script uh, to guru then next seva you perform seva also so that seva and submissiveness will enhance your understanding of scripture not just enquiries okay so just sitting with some books in a secluded room is not sufficient for a deep assimilation of shastra following spiritual culture is essential there may be people who are studying uh, all the scriptures in a very scholarly way if their sadhana is poor if they have no service attitude if they are not associating with devotees okay if their dealings of dealings with other devotees is very poor objectionable what is the point of understanding so much scripture right and they have not understood scripture basically speaking okay so intelligence detached from spiritual culture is just like a speedy train without solid tracks train is very speed very fast okay very great engine it has but there are no tracks what will it do it will do it will only create havoc therefore not just studying we should also follow the five elements of spiritual culture nicely so let's see what are the qualities of a good student of scriptures these are various qualities depending on the time we have how long should we go till 10 o'clock right okay, okay. maybe i'll complete by 9:45 we'll take some kind of also so these are different uh, uh aspects of a good student of shastra so first devotion there is one shloka aham vedmi suko vettim aham vedmi suko vettim vyaso vettina vettiva vyaso vettina vettiva bhaktya bhagavatam grahyam bhaktya bhagavatam grahyam na buddhya na chatikayam intelligence is required to understand scripture but it is not the only qualification it's definitely not the primary qualification devotion is more important aham with me lord shiva is saying that i know bhagavatam sukho vetti sukadeva goswami also knows bhagavatam vyaso vetti na vetti va vyasto me or me not understand bhagavatam okay bhai <laughs> bhaktiya bhagavatam grahyam bhagavatam is understood only with bhakti with devotion right without devotion we cannot understand bhagavatam okay na buddhya na chatika ya with buddhi or with tika we cannot understand then why vyasa is mentioned as doubtful here <laughs> because vyasa is the incarnation of krishna so incarnation or if you see vyasa there as a as a uh, what to say incarnation or the lord yes his understanding about the lord is not as great as a, as a devotee understands bhagavatam right so even krishna cannot completely understand himself to understand himself krishna has to accept the mood of a devotee shrimati radharani's mood and then become uh, lord chaitanya mahaprabhu then he understands and appreciates and relishes krishna's sweetness more <laughs> even krishna cannot understand himself completely devotee can understand nicely so basically devotion is required to understand krishna okay so again many other shlokas are there not necessary that we prove this point it's it's well taken bhaktya mama bhijanati yavanyas chasmi tatvatah tato mam tatvato gnatva vishati tadanantaram only by bhakti we can understand bhagavatam okay understand anything so now let me give a simple example lord chaitanya mahaprabhu met this sotanyan brahmana in sri ranga kshetra and brahmana was crying crying you know the story i will not elaborate on it but the brahmana was crying in tears mahaprabhu asked him why are you crying first he said that i don't know how to read bhagavatam because read bhagavad gita because i am an illiterate person but still i am reading Bhago, bhagavad gita because my spiritual master my guru instructed me to do so so mahaprabhu was okay fine why are you crying he said whenever i open bhagavad gita i only see krishna i only remember krishna who is playing the role of a chariot driver of his own devotee arjuna that is his bhakta vatsalyata so 
appreciating with 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 my heart filled with appreciation for krishna's affection for his devotees tears automatically uh, rolled down my eyes then mahaprabhu said my dear brahmana whatever you understood from bhagavad gita is the essence of bhagavad gita he is an illiterate person he is unable to even read bhagavad gita and what will he understand how can that understanding be essence mahaprabhu has his points he said you have two qualities one submissiveness to guru to love for krishna so all a person may be great scholar if he doesn't have submissiveness towards guru and if he doesn't love krishna what's the point of being a scholar of scriptures because this brahmana loves krishna appreciates krishna and also he has submissiveness to guru his understanding is the best understanding okay so if after reading enter bhagavad gita if one fails to understand how much krishna loves all of us <coughs> how much we can love krishna then what's the point of reading bhagavad gita okay mahaprabhu is very clear in saying that uh, love for krishna is the ultimate prayojana of studying shastra okay so next mm -hmm. we will go to the second point first is we are discussing about the uh, qualities of a good student of scriptures first quality is devotion second is a sense of urgency eagerness eagerness is the golden key to the treasure house of scriptural wisdom you want to access treasure you need a key for it you want to access the treasure of scriptural wisdom the key is eagerness the key is uh, the enthusiasm and a sense of urgency we cannot digest food without hunger we are not hungry someone is feeding you big feast okay we can't digest it it will only create indigestion but if we are very very hungry even if the other person is giving you some simple food also you are eager to eat it and you can definitely assimilate it so similarly we if you are eager to hear hari katha then we will be able to understand and assimilate and absorb and realize shastra so that eagerness is not there it's difficult to understand and this eagerness is exemplified by the sages of navisharanya they said sushru shatam nah we are very very eager to hear tanno bhavan vai bhagavat pradhano mahattamai kanta parayanasya हरे रुदारम चरितम विशुद्धम सुश्रूषतम नो वितनो तु विद्वन माय डियर सुत गोस्वामी वी आर एक्सट्रीमली ईगर टू हियर हरि कथा फ्रॉम योर लोटस माउथ प्लीज स्पीक 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 वी आर नॉट सेशिएटेड बाय हियरिंग इफ यू स्पीक सो दिस सेंस ऑफ ईगरनेस एंड विद व्हाट सेंस ऑफ अर्जेंसी दैट परीक्षित महाराज इज हियरिंग श्रीमद् भागवतम ही ओनली हैड 7 डेज टू लिव इन दीस 7 डेज he did not have any agenda in life no other plans in life except hearing shrimad bhagavatam i will not do anything in the seven days of my rest of my life there is a sense of urgency he wants to understand more and more about krishna that is coming very soon one day past two days past three days past i only have four days to live i want to know more and more about krishna and his eagerness is asking so many questions and at the end of ninth canto oh, sukadev goswami summarized the entire sri krishna leela in two three verses two verses only then our parichit maharaj said by couple of shlokas i want to hear 90 chapters he is very eager okay please elaborately describe and after describing how krishna killed putana sukadev goswami gave a uh, phala shruti govinde labhate ratim by hearing this putana moksha leela one will attain rati for govinda he said like that then uh, parichit maharaj said why are you giving phalashruti now are you going to conclude <laughs> right because phalashruti is given at the end of a conversation end of a discussion but he says i want more and you all please elaborately describe krishna katha there is great eagerness and a sense of urgency okay don't postpone don't conclude the class i still have four days So stay till the end. Okay, so that sense of urgency is required. By eagerly reading Bhakti Vedanta purports, we feel he is personally speaking to us. To the degree we are eager, to that degree we can relish Bhagavatam and we can uh, relate with it. When there is no eagerness, 
when there is no hunger even if you are served the tastiest food we cannot relish it when there is hunger even if you are given non spicy khichdi okay with less salt in it we can relish it because there is hunger there so similarly when we have eagerness we can we can appreciate harikatha better so third quality is character and dealings let me tell you a couple of shlokas you can also decide त्वया खलु पुराणानी सेतिहासानी चानघाम आख्यातान्यप्यधीतानी धर्मशास्त्राणी अन्युता त्वया खलु पुराणानी सेतिहासानी चानघा The sages of Nimisharanya are appreciating Sutta Goswami, seeing that Sutta Goswami You have well studied all the scriptures. Akshatani. You also explain them nicely. You are an eloquent speaker. You are a wonderful student. And on top of it, Anagha. You are sinless. So these are the qualifications for Sutta Goswami to speak Shri Mad Bhagavatam. Being sinless, being well read, and having eloquence. But these three are definitely great qualifications. But these are not the real qualifications. What are the real qualifications? These are the real qualifications, internal qualifications. They say in the next shloka. Vetatvam somya tat sarvam. Tatva tas tadanugrahat. Guru yuhusnigdhasya shishyasya. Guru bhavaguhyam apyuta. Vetatvam somya tat sarvam. My dear Sutta Goswami, you have understood the scriptures. you understood even the most confidential aspects of scriptures because your gurus have revealed to you in reciprocation with your two qualities what are they saumya and snigdha saumya means he is very pure in his character okay snigdha which is very affectionate and respectful towards other devotees so being very gentle and pure and non malicious in our character and being very cordial respectful and affectionate in our dealings with other devotees and especially gurus these two are most prominent qualifications earlier there are three qualifications they are external being sinless means following for regulated principles for example yes it's great we have to appreciate them but spiritual life doesn't end with this following for regulated principles only there is more to it it's the beginning actually right so there is much more to it uh, one is being sinless next is being well read third is to uh, be able to present things nicely but these three are external qualifications the internal qualifications are being pure at heart okay there is there is purity in the heart there is simplicity in the heart there is no malice of envy pride etc one may be following the four regulated principles nicely but one is envious proud okay so there is uh, still something lacking in the person person's character one is not committing any sins but one is committing aparad of envying other devotees right so being sinless is great but there is something deeper than that that is being respectful to uh, elders and gurus and also being pure at heart so these are the external and internal qualifications of sutta goswami so one is about the skill part second is the attitude part right so although a person may not be very well read or eloquent in speech if one has a gentle character with which they respect gurus and vaishnavas so that makes them more qualified students of bhagavatam and speakers of bhagavatam so character is more important than skills then fourth is gratitude what's the mood of studying scriptures let's study scriptures gratefully so it is the attitude of gratitude that attracts the attention of krishna more than the magnitude of our knowledge and scholarship so so many acharyas have presented wonderful explanations on our scriptures we need to be very grateful to all of them the next is humility and faith so unless we are humble we cannot get knowledge so krishna enumerated several aspects of knowledge in bhagavad gita if you remember In the thirteenth chapter, Arjuna asked Krishna six questions. You know what are they? Nyanam, Gnayam, Purusha, Prakriti, and Kshetra, Kshetra Gna. So, amongst these six items, Krishna started elaborating on Gnana. Gnana means knowledge. 
सो ही गिव ट्वेंटी एलिमेंट्स ऑफ नॉलेज तमानितमतम भित्तम अहिंसा शांतिराज्यम आचार्योपासनम सोचम स्थैर्यम आत्मविनिग्रह लाइक दैट देयर आर सो मेनी क्वालिटीज एंड ही आल्सो मेंशन सम ऑफ दिस क्वालिटीज इन 13 12th चैप्टर आल्सो देन इन 16th चैप्टर आल्सो सो कमिंग बैक टू द पार्ट ऑफ ज्ञानम द फर्स्ट एलिमेंट ऑफ नॉलेज इज ह्यूमिलिटी ओके व्हेन वी आर हंबल देन वी आर नॉलेजेबल व्हेन वी आर एरोगेंट we are ignorant arrogance is a product of ignorance humility is product of knowledge so when we are uh, when we have knowledge we will definitely have humility vidya vinaya sampanne so what is the point of having so much knowledge that only makes one look down upon others who do not have so much knowledge okay if the knowledge is increasing ahankar if gnana is leading to ahankar that is called agnana not gnana if the gnana is leading to vinaya it is called vignana vinaya plus gnana take the v here and add the gnana there it becomes vignana ahankar plus gnana take a from here and add gnana there it becomes agnana <laughs> so gnana associated with uh, ahankar is agnana not gnana and nana associated with vinaya humility is vignana so we should we want realized knowledge or some kind of theoretical knowledge that makes us proud so humility is very very important quality to accept the knowledge of scriptures and apply the knowledge of scriptures and assimilate it and realize it and absorb it so when someone tries to pour milk in a cup that is already filled Right, this cup is there. There is already water, and you are pouring honey into it. It will only overflow, right? So similarly, when the mind is filled with so many concoctions and negative thoughts and uh, negative feelings like envy and other things, even so much knowledge is being poured there, it cannot absorb. Just empty the cup. So remove the remove the heart from all arrogance. Then the real knowledge will just flow in. Okay, that requires humility. श्रद्धावान लभते ज्ञान फेथ ऑल्सो ओके देन अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट क्वालिटी बीइंग नॉन एनवियस सिक्स्थ क्वालिटी मीन वी नीड टू बी नॉन एनवियस टू अंडरस्टैंड गीता व्हाट डस कृष्ण से इन द नाइन चैप्टर भगवत गीता इदं तु ते गुह्यतमं प्रवक्ष्याम्यन सूयवे इदं तु ते गुह्यतमं आई एम गोइंग टू रिवील टू यू द मोस्ट कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज because you are anasuya you have no asuya you have no envy and bhagavatam dharma projita kaita vutra paramah nirmat saranam satam vedyam vastava matra vastu shivadam tapatrayo mulanam nirmat saranam satam vedyam bhagavatam is understood by nirmat sara devotees non envious devotees to the degree we are non envious to that degree we understand shastra so if if a person is envious of another devotee if one devotee is unable to tolerate the prosperity and uh, devotional depth of another devotee that that envious feeling will only dampen our spiritual advancement right so being non envious is considered a one of the foremost qualities to understand gita and bhagavatam as revealed by krishna himself right so next servitude jiva goswami you know jiva goswami one of the greatest scholars of his time of all time so you know how jiva goswami used to write scriptures he would take a palm leaf okay he would take a palm leaf and write page number 1 on one side and the ink has to be dried right so he'll keep it for drying there he'll take another palm leaf and page write page number 3 and keep it for drying so meanwhile page number 1 is dry he'll flip it and write page number 2 okay and keep it there for drying then he'll pick up page number 3 and flip it because it's dry by now he'll write page number 4 so what he's supposed to write in page number 2 is already there in his mind so he he is writing page number 
when we are writing articles or books we just write and rearrange things edit them uh, you know put comma full stop uh, sometimes when we begin to write an article or a book we will write first paragraph that is meant to be last paragraph <laughs> okay and we'll write last paragraph it's good to introduce the topic right so i'll keep it up okay so i have done it many times in our open book exams and all so now we have typing and all that in those days they can't afford so much paper also they have to be very clear in their thought process such a great scholar who has written about four lakh original shlokas you know what was he doing he was an assistant of our rupa goswami and sanatana goswami when they were writing books jiva goswami would collect palm leaves process them cut them nicely okay get ink and arrange for rupa and sanatana to write their books this is not a skill based service anyone can do this seva menial seva a such a skillful person is doing something very menial uh, as a service to his superiors so that attitude that attitude of jiva goswami made him a great scholar so uh, when we are very qualified in the service of devotion in the service of krishna when we are doing very big privileged services there is a there is a possibility that we overly identify with that position and privilege and we may be disinclined to do something small but great devotees like jiva goswami although he is personally scholar he has no reservations in doing this menial service also right so service attitude is very very essential for advancing in devotional service and also to understand shastra right that's why krishna said pariprashtena sevaya service is that circuit that converts the input of theoretical knowledge into practical realization till we practically render service to guru and vaishnavas till that time our understanding of shastra remains theoretical only vidura asked several questions to maitreya maitreya please tell me this please tell me that tell me about jiva tell me about ishvara tell me about prakriti my three men answered all these questions and where he said yes yes i understood i understood all this all your points but my understanding is at this moment theoretical only i will convert this theoretical understanding into practical realization when i start serving you when i start serving vaishnavas so service will convert our knowledge into realization we will assimilate and absorb what we studied better by by service to guru next even krishna does service to guru even ram does service to guru one more point nourishment versus remembrance so how many of you have studied something but you forgot it anyone here <laughs> okay you read something and you forget it <laughs> so the answer is we may or may not be able to remember everything that we read or hear but still we should read it here what's the point i don't remember what's the point of reading so much the answer is we don't read to remember we read to relish and we read to keep ourselves krishna conscious all of us ate a great feast on uh, nityananda tarayadashi day right more than a month back or uh, last year radhashtami big feast how many of you remember the menu of radhashtami last year here <laughs> how many items did you uh, did you eat okay how much quantity did you eat you ate but you forgot what is the color of uh, uh, the dt's dress on uh, on uh, uh, sajan master midi 3 years back we remember <laughs> we don't remember uh, but we have taken darshan the merciful glances of the lord of their lordships were showered on us and that resonated our inspiration in devotional service and we are still continuing on the path that darshan that we took on janmashtami day 3 years back was very crucial for my survival in bhakti today although i may not remember the uh, type of necklace that krishna is wearing although i don't remember how many flowers are there in the garland of krishna right that he was wearing on that day although i don't remember the menu uh, of what i ate i ate and i'm nourished and i and i got energy i'm still living so we may not remember the menu that we ate we may not remember the darshan that we have taken 
Similarly, we may not remember the shlokas as the chapters of Gita Bhagavatam that we have studied. But that is like food that was very essential for us to read. That's that day's quota of spiritual nourishment. So let's read or hear to nourish ourselves. We may not remember. If you remember, that's great. Okay. And we may not remember everything. Our remembrance, our, our connection with some point of uh, what we are hearing and reading, that is established according to our uh, consciousness. The more pure is our consciousness, the more we will be able to relate, relate and assimilate things. But when the consciousness is not sufficiently pure, we may not be able to understand, relate with everything that we are hearing. But then what's the point of reading? My consciousness is not that pure. To purify your consciousness, you keep reading. This is the process of purification. Okay. I am reading, say, Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam with an impure consciousness. Okay. So by reading, my consciousness will become even more pure. Then I understand it better. Okay. So earlier we said that envy, uh, if there is envy, we cannot understand Gita and Bhagavatam. I have envy. Should I not read Gita? Should I not read Bhagavatam? No, read Bhagavatam. Read Gita to become non-envious. Then in a non-envious state of mind, you can understand it better. Getting right? So it's the goal, it's the means also. <laughs> so we, we do bhakti uh, at the level of sadhana, uh, means in sadhaka stays, we may not have pure consciousness. Uh, we may still be struggling with so many anarthas. Still, the process of purification is to perform all this ravanam, kirtanam, smaranam, etc. And eventually, when we are purified in our consciousness, we can do the same shravanam, kirtanam, uh, smaranam in a much effective way, in a more effective way, with feelings for Krishna, with bhava. Fine? So, next, seeking the essence is also very important. When we are reading, we are not supposed to be like uh, <coughs> bharavahis, we are supposed to be like saragrahis. You understand what is bharavahi? Bharavahi means a burden carrier. <laughs> Saragrahi means an essence seeker. So don't let's not carry so much of burden of knowledge. I read this book also, I read that book also, I read this book also, I read that book also, I read thousand books. <laughs> how much you understood from thousand books? How much you remember? How much you can assimilate? How, can you, how much you can apply? You don't know, but I read everything. When you ask some question, they are confused. <laughs> okay. So there is one devotee named Tapan Mishra. He read so many books. He, he is confused. What is my sadhana? What is my sadhya? What am I supposed to attain in my life? What is the goal of my life? He is confused. And he is also confused about uh, what is um, the way of achieving the goal. He is confused about the goal only. What to speak of sadhana uh, to attain that goal. So he came to Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu said, Bahu Shastra Bahu Vakya Chitya Brahma Hai. <laughs> if you read so many books, so many statements, some so many people, so many perspectives, Chitta Brahma, you will get confused only. Right? So read something <coughs> essential. Even if you read so much, you need to extract the essence from it. So how to do all that in our study, we will discuss in the method part. But we are not meant to be Bharavahis. We should not be carrying so much knowledge. We should be essence seekers. Although you read so much, you should be able to understand the essence of it and how to apply that essence. So seek the essence. Let's try to be essence seekers. Uh, so let's not uh, be burden carriers. Essentially, seek the essence while eradicating excitement for extravagance. Okay. So with these points, I will come to research versus revelation. Okay. Today I could only manage to complete mood, not method. Okay. So scriptural understanding is not a product of research. It's a product of revelation. Bhagavatam is best, and best understood when we approach Bhagavatam with the right consciousness and when we allow Bhagavatam to reveal itself to us. Okay. Where will Bhagavatam go today? Let me see. I will be going to sit 10 hours on Bhagavatam today. I want to understand this. The determination to understand is good, but you can't demand understanding. Bhagavatam bestows understanding. Let's accept it like beggar. Okay. So let's not demand. Let's not read Bhagavatam in the mood of being a doer. Let's not try to conquer 
Bhagavatam understanding. Let's say to request Bhagavatam, please reveal, reveal yourself to me. For example, there are two friends, and one per one friend is uh, uh, like interacting with the other friend once in three years, once in five years. So there's not not much to discuss, right? So you can't even call them friends also in one sense, right? So there are two contexts, <laughs> but their meeting is not so often. They are meeting very rarely. There is not subject matter, not so much subject matter to discuss. And on top of it, if this one person sees some malicious intentions in the other person, he is not comfortable to reveal his heart, isn't it? When you are interacting with him, and if you see that he has some kind of personal agendas and selfish uh, agendas, you are not very excited to reveal your heart to that person, isn't it? <coughs> Similarly, Bhagavatam also is not comfortable. to reveal its inner meanings to a reader who has malicious intentions <laughs> why bhagavatam is not a book bhagavatam is person not an ordinary person bhagavatam is krishna himself krishna tulya bhagavata bhagavatam is not different from krishna bhagavatam is a person bhagavatam becomes comfortable to reveal its inner meanings to someone who is frequently interacting with bhagavatam and who has pure intentions in interaction Understanding of Bhagavatam is dependent on the purity of our intention and the frequency of our interaction. Frequently interact with Bhagavatam, then Bhagavatam has something more to reveal. Today we read one page, close the book. After three years, we read second page, <laughs> and we forget what we had read in the first page. Again, we read. Okay. So once I was reading first chapter, a Bhagavad Bhagavad Gita, reading repeatedly, not getting much. So I am trying to read repeatedly, but I am discontinuing in my study again. Great, great determination. I want to start. Couple of months passed. One of my seniors asked, uh, "How long you have been reading Bhagavad Bhagavad Gita? So where did you reach? Which chapter you reach?" I said, uh, "I'm in first chapter." Oh, you are still observing the Arvins, Arvins. <laughs> <laughs> you are still observing the Arvins like Arjuna. <laughs> you started long way. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> right. So, uh, anyways. This, see, considering consider these examples, Bhagavatam is compared to a lamp. Anjhatma dipam. Yahaswano bhava makila shruti sarame kam. Anjhatma dipam ati ti ti rishatam tamondham. Samsari nam karuna yaha purana guhyam. Tam yasa suno mupayami guru muni nam. Anjhatma dipam. Bhagavatam is compared with a lamp that illuminates the ignorant hearts. ignorance is the darkness and bhagavatam is a lamp and illuminates the heart with knowledge and bhagavatam is also compared to sun bhagavatam is also compared to fruit all these comparisons we can discuss later but the main comparison that i wanted to mention in this context is mohini murti bhagavatam is compared to mohini murti just like mohini murti has given all the nectar to devatas and not a single drop to asuras similarly Bhagavatam is more comfortable to reveal all the inner meanings and deeper secrets to sincere devotees and not to those people who approach Bhagavatam with malicious intentions. What could be a malicious intention to uh, in reading Bhagavatam, in reading Bhagavad Gita, to become famous, to earn money, to become a scholar, uh, to defeat people, to establish one superiority over people, uh, with, uh, having. Uh, a sense gratifying mood of uh, uh, of uh, considering oneself better than others in understanding the scripture so these are all very poor intentions we study bhagavatam to get inspiration in our devotional service we should approach scripture to develop love for krishna we study scripture to make friendship with all the wonderful personalities in shrimad bhagavatam who are so humble at heart like kunti maharani all the pandavas then pracheta <coughs> then the gopis of vrindavan all the vrajavasis ambarish maharaj prithu maharaj dhruva maharaj suniti there are so many wonderful personalities in shrimad bhagavatam who are giving us so many lessons through their realizations and through their activities let me make friendship with these people they are examples great examples of wonderful devotion by studying their stories i will also equip myself with the necessary understanding of how to perform devotional service 
They are my role models. I want to know more and more about their biographies. Prahalad Maharaj, when I read Srimad Bhagavatam, Prahalad Maharaj's story, I will also be inspired to love Krishna like Prahalad Maharaj did. So like that, we should seek inspiration from these great devotees. With great respect, we should approach Srimad Bhagavatam. So we should perform bhakti in a better way by by learning from all the devotees whose stories are mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam. If that is my approach towards Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam will reveal everything. Oh, you want to serve Krishna? Fine. Take this understanding, take this understanding, take this perspective. So Bhagavatam will reveal more and more secrets if our intentions are pure. Bhagavatam reveals itself to us in reciprocation with the purity of our intent and the consistency of our attempt. Intent should be pure. An attempt should be consistent. If the attempt is inconsistent, we are reading today and after one month we are reading the next page. It's a bit, uh, uh, the lack of continuity will also lead to lack of understanding. Second, intention should be pure. Okay. So, Bhagavatam is like Mohani Murti, we cannot cheat. One person wanted to cheat, Mr. Rahu, he wanted to cheat. Okay. So, Sudarshan Chakra, uh, uh, Mohani Murti sent Sudarshan Chakra and cut his head. So we cannot cheat Bhagavatam. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, uh, next is uh, this we have completed. Uh, there are many examples. I think you can go through these examples. One more point is envy and pride. Vimado Vimatsaraha. Bhagavatam says this one phrase. Vimada Vimatsaraha means uh, when there is envy and pride in the heart. We cannot understand Bhagavatam. Okay. When there is envy, we see that another devotee who has better understanding of Bhagavatam, uh, we cannot appreciate that devotee. We want to just pull him down. When there is pride, we take so much pride in our own understanding of Bhagavatam and we look down upon people who do not have so much understanding. So, when there is pride and envy in the heart, although we are studying Bhagavatam on a regular basis, although we are studying scriptures, uh, in a very systematic manner, uh, we are quoting shlokas left, right, center. We are impressing people. We are mesmerizing people with our eloquent speech. Although all these things are happening, we have not understood a single syllable of what we are studying and reading if there is envy and pride in the heart. Okay. So, preparing consciousness is more important to assimilate Shastra uh, apart from having some... Uh, <laughs> right methods of study. So, tomorrow we will discuss about the right methods of study. Right means some effective methods of study. Uh, and there may be so many methods, I will share some according to my limited understanding. And uh, there are many other ways of assimilating Shastra. So, we can do it another time. So, with this I will conclude. Today we only discussed uh, uh, the mood of studying Shastra. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow we will discuss the methods. We'll speak a little bit about teaching also. I hope this is okay with you. Richard is fine. <laughs>